Hello, I'm Michael Sperandeo. I am the Fall Creative in Resident at the Denver Art Museum. I am going to be putting together some podcasts for you guys uh, to dive a little bit deeper into the behind the scenes and give context to um, some of the crazy things that I'll be doing with my residency. The first podcast is this one. It's me. Hey, hi, nice to meet you. I want to give an intro, uh, give a little bit of insight into who I'm going to be chatting with and what we'll be chatting about. The next and upcoming podcast, I'll be talking with Robert Fikes. He's a local creative coder here in Denver and has worked on some really amazing commercial and private projects. Robbie and I have worked together on a few different projects, namely the Untitled in 2019 that I did. Um, we put together an app uh, and a story called Alpha and Omega, and it was basically a scavenger hunt with augmented reality as the tool to peer into this other dimension. Robbie helped me with the backend features of the app and also some of the UX and UI animations. And that's really where Robbie shines. I love his animations and he has a coding context and background to what he's doing, which I think is a very unique perspective. So I wanna chat with him, um, dive deeper into what he does, dive deeper into what he wants to do in the future, and maybe talk a little bit about some of the other projects that he's done around Denver. One of my other collaborators name is Ryan Buxton. He has worked with me on a couple private projects, as well as um, this project. Buxton is a coding wizard. He does crazy things with networking and backend systems. He's basically built a lot of the framework for what we're doing and has put together methods for us to do some of the web interactions that we're doing. I've had a couple really cool conversations with Buxton about this idea of code as art. I think that's a conversation that I'd like to shed a little bit more light onto. I think coders don't necessarily always consider themselves artists, but ultimately they're creating, and that is really truly the essence, especially too since the idea that art has intention you have to have intention when you're writing code. You know exactly what it's going to need to do, which I think is a unique take. Um, and I want to dive a little bit deeper into that conversation with him. The next podcast will be a two-part series. And it's a series about this question that I keep asking myself. Is digital art homeless? And it's really centered around this idea of the right place for digital art and what that looks like. I'm seeing some amazing, flourishing artists, and the only time I see their work is on social media platforms, and I think that's really interesting. Um, it's not a bad thing. Social media is a great way to share what you're doing, but where is its home? Um, where can you exhibit digital art without having to sacrifice, without having to print something out or display it two-dimensionally when it's meant to be three-dimensional in a digital sphere. So I want to have that conversation and dive a little bit deeper into the implications of the future of digital art. The first podcast in that series will be with Ivar Zaley. He is a patron of digital arts here in Denver. Ivar puts together the Supernova Film Festival, which is a absolutely unique thing that's that's here in Denver. I go to it every year and I'm just stunned by the the exploration and experimentation of digital artists in animation and it's it's really exciting to see. That is a that is a that is a realm in and of itself. Um, and I'm really excited that Ivar is really pushing and advocating for the expansion of this medium. The other podcast in the series will be with David Moak. David Moak is once again an advocate of the digital arts, specifically in the public sphere, um, which I think is really awesome, especially too because the exposure to these digital arts um, creates a whole new way people interact with them. 
he's been doing quite a bit with the uh, clock tower, the Daniel and Fisher's clock tower, which has become a projection surface, which is amazing. And he also is involved with the Denver Theater District, um, which has sort of helped create a new surface for digital artists with the large LED screens around downtown, um, which I think is so cool. It, it, it's, it's really beautiful to see. So I'll be talking with him uh, once again about the future. Where is this going? Um, how has Denver sort of embraced this idea of the digital arts? The next few podcasts will be more centered around um, people who I've found a lot of inspiration from. So one of them being a professor that I've had, uh, Howard Cook. He teaches um, at CU Denver through the DAC program. And I wanted to chat with him about story. I think that um, one thing I've really come to realize, especially about interactive games and uh, this idea of art as a game, um, story is key, like truly, truly key, especially because so much of what I want to talk about is so nuanced that just saying it, I don't think necessarily actually addresses it um, in the way that I'm hoping to through story. Um, so I wanted to chat with him about story and, and what sort of interplay there is between modes and symbolism uh, and story and how that relates to us as humans and, and, and what that connection really is. Why do we love stories? Like we love TV, we love the news, we love video games, they're all stories, right? Um, they're all presented in a narrative way. Uh, so what, it is, what is it about that that we're so drawn to? So I will be diving into those conversations with him. After that podcast, I'll be doing another podcast with Anthony Garcia. He is an amazing person and an amazing artist. He does a lot of mural work, um, but he also, uh, basically has uplifted um, a nonprofit organization called Birdseed Collective that is honestly a staple of, of his community. And I think that that is truly unique and incredibly important. So I, I wanted to chat with him, um, especially because he's one of the first mural artists that I saw doing anything with augmented reality in sort of a relation with his mural art. Um, and I've talked with him a lot about this idea of where art is going and what, what digital art is. Um, and I wanted to extend that conversation. After that podcast, I'll be doing a podcast with my wife, Ashley Frazier. She's a local artist here in Denver and works a lot with medium and material. Uh, and that actually drives some of the core principles of the messages that she's saying in her artwork. And I think that that's really what I want to do is explore what that is for digital arts. I think digital arts is unique in that the materials are very um, predefined, right? We're using softwares and hardwares, which which really is an element I want to explore with her and, and, and to see what she thinks uh, can be done and, and how her practice plays such a huge role in the exploration of material uh, and to kind of further that conversation that we've we've had multiple times um, that I find to be very fruitful for um, for my practice and hers. Uh, and then the last podcast I wanted to do is with the with some of the people collaborating with me at the dam. This would not be possible without them. They are pushing all the time to help my vision come to light. And I think that that's really unique. This this really can't be done without advocates behind the scenes really pushing for artists to have a voice. So I wanted to share that. I wanted to give them a voice and let them uh, talk about their experience and, and just give a little bit of insight as to what it's like to be behind the scenes and to, to be such a driving force for the artist community. And with that said, um, Let's dive a little bit deeper into what am I doing with all these computers and how does it have to do with, with reality? What is that? I've been thinking a lot about reality, right? Like what, what is reality? I mean, is it this, all this like physical stuff? Is it like the the version of our external sensory that we have decided um, is actually here. 
and that's what reality is, you know, and, and uh, like dreams, the, uh, the fact that dreams are so filled with sensory and in the moment real, it really, to me, starts to ask a question about the flexibility of reality. And yes, we are confined or subjected to principles of physics. There's no escaping that. We are a part of a measurable system. That's for sure. I, I, I wouldn't deny that. But I think really what I'm trying to get at is more of the phenomenology of reality. What are we, what are we experiencing exactly? You know, we can measure things. Um, we can decide on whether or not it is or isn't something. Um, and that's where digital realities start to, for me, raise a question of where is it? I mean, sure, it's, it's somewhere in a device. It's using hardware components and software co components to display, um, you know, light f through pixels. But the experience of it, I think, is something really unique, especially having the opportunity to uh, develop for virtual reality as well as spend a good amount of time in virtual reality. It really it really plays off this idea that that there's some sort of relationship I think that's happening between our perception and the understanding and interpretation of of the sense that we're getting because when you're in virtual reality you know you're 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 aware that you're in a headset right um and and when technology gets better hopefully there will be ways to limit the 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 separation from the content and your imagination but that second part of the statement is really what i'm curious about is the imagination we look at technology through the ages and how that technology has always been a part of storytelling which i believe is us trying to tap into a narrative um, or another reality maybe not necessarily a physical reality right but another reality a, a very um, a very understood and felt reality like for example books the first time people started to read what was the thing that drove their ability to experience the stories their imagination that that is what it was it was words to you know, your inner eye imagining this sort of, this sort of world. Um, and to take it a step further, you know, when we started having uh, pictures associated with words and, and then it developed into radio and, you know, and there's, there, there's a famous example of the, uh, I'll have to double check the, the name, but right, the, the Mars, the Mars program on the radio uh, was so real because of the medium and the imagination that it, it convinced people that we were being invaded by Mars. Um, the validity of the image based off of this idea of the medium, right? A picture, a, it, it's, a, it's real because it's a picture. And plus our imagination is when we start to build this, this idea and this relationship and this um, engagement with the story through our imagination facilitated by our senses and then when we go to stuff like vr that that's just exponentially increased your the the leap for your imagination is smaller and smaller and we see that progress with technology especially in terms of how it relates to story or the medium or the method in which story is presented and so I really wanted to experiment with what was going on, right? We're to a point where I would say the overwhelming majority of our population is familiar with mobile phones and probably most likely has a mobile phone that can access the internet 
or at least call or text. And if they don't have it, they know someone that does, right? We, our youth is, are, are raised with the devices. And in fact, most news for a particular demographic is received through their mobile device, um, which I see similar in parallel with the the instance with Mars, right? People would most likely get their news from the radio. So having something um, artful and storytelling wise coming through a device that people use to um, receive true information um, does something to the way people interpret that message that's coming from that device. So I really wanted to play with this idea of, of simulating a detective scenario, a scavenger hunt with the phone and playing off these um, modes and these sort of uh, cliches of real information that's found on the internet um, and what that looks like to look a little bit further past that information. Um, and so that's a core interaction point of the game where people are brought to these websites um, and these websites seem real um, but there's something behind them and I think that that plays a really nice uh, sort of metaphor um, and in a way pointing at this idea that these things that we see that are so forefront and so easy to take for face value um, that maybe taking a step back and looking past that face value information and exploring what's behind it might give insight that maybe there's some code behind it, right? Um, maybe there's some sort of algorithm behind this information um, that's really potentially targeting individuals. And, and, and what does that mean, right? What, what does that mean for the way we receive information and to go back to reality what does that mean for the flexibility of reality you know and that's what i want to explore so come play the game come to the denver art museum take a step into this idea of what is real and what isn't i i think that that's maybe something right now that i find to be a really big question. What is real? What, what is not real? Um, come find out and explore. Uh, try it out. Um, I'll be opening up a Discord uh, for both engagement into the game and engagement with me and my team. So uh, be a part of the communication. Come explore. Uh, come test your, your ideas. Um, and cool. It'll be super fun. Thanks. <laughs>